the larger picture here, the Keystone XL pipeline, developing these tar, tar sand uh, oils um, in, uh, in Canada. Um, there have been some calculations that argue that, you know, even if we develop the full uh, petroleum reserves from the tar sands, uh, that we wouldn't uh, add to our global carbon emissions nearly as much as if we continue, for example, to burn coal. There's a lot more coal available to burn um, than there is these uh, tar sand oils. Uh, on the other hand, I, I think it represents you know, what's wrong about our, our current prioritization. If we are to you know, invest heavily in the infrastructure, so we're subsidizing um, efforts to get at this increasingly difficult reservoir of, uh, of fossil fuel energy. Um, if we are to incentivize that effort uh, through, um, th through uh, you know, certain government subsidies, then we're going in exactly the opposite direction of where we need to be going. Um, we're actually simply developing more and more of the available fossil fuel reserves at a time when we have to be ramping them down. Uh, we need to be bringing our global carbon emissions to a peak within the next few years, and we need to ramp them down dramatically in the decades ahead if we are going to avoid crossing that next um, sobering uh, milestone, 450 parts per million in the atmosphere. And so it's really not so much precisely how much carbon will add to the atmosphere by building the Keystone XL pipeline, as it is, it's an example of how we're going in the wrong direction. We need to follow what the rest of the world is doing. If you look to India and China, um, the developing world, they're investing far more in renewable energy uh, than we are here in the U.S., and this is, in fact, a matter of global competitiveness. We in the U.S. are falling behind because we're letting the rest of the world uh, move ahead and, and recognize that the future of our global economy is going to be in renewable energy.